Cheer, Crutches and Love Part 3 Nick gently placed his hand on my injured ankle, his touch warm and reassuring. He reached into his kit and pulled out an ace bandage that he unrolled carefully. His fingers were steady and sure as he began wrapping the bandage around my ankle starting just above the arch of my foot. He worked with a practiced ease pulling the bandage snugly but not too tight, making sure each layer overlapped the previous one just enough to provide support. He continued wrapping and moving upward with precision. The bandage felt so nice on my ankle like a protective cocoon, the pressure soothing against the swelling. His hands and his focus entirely on making sure my ankle was properly supported. When he reached the top just below my calf, he secured the bandage with metal clips ensuring it would stay in place. There he said softly finally looking up from my ankle and leg at me again. That should help with the swelling and keep your ankle stable. But you need to stay off it as much as possible for the next few days okay? It feels good thanks, the pressure was soothing against the swelling and I couldn't help but feel a little thrill with his hands on my long leg. He gave me crutches and I made my way slowly back to my dorm room my mind already racing ahead to our next session. I couldn't wait to feel his hands on me again and maybe next time he might be exploring the rest of my body with the same care and attention he'd given to my ankle. As I lay in bed that night I started rubbing my sprained ankle and the ace bandages feeling nice and warm against my skin. My mind wandered to Nick and I couldn't help but imagine what it would be like if he, well, you know. Oh Nick I whispered to myself my fingers tracing lazy circles on my skin. Nick I can't. Jesus I sounded like a teenage, I needed to stop that. But in my mind his fingers explored every inch of my body. My sprained ankle pushing against him. With one hand on my aching sprained ankle, my body reacted. Despite the nagging pain in my ankle, I found myself feeling more alive than I had in quite some time. As I drifted off to sleep and I felt a strange sense of comfort and security wash over me. It was as if simply knowing that Nick was out there somewhere ready and waiting to help me through whatever challenges lay ahead, was enough to make me feel as if I could conquer the world even with a bad ankle that could get worse. And it was that thought that ultimately took me into a deep and restful slumber. The next few weeks passed by in a blur of classes cheerleading practice and physical therapy sessions, despite the constant demands on my time and energy. I found myself better than I had been in quite some time even if my ankle was taking a long time to heal. As I limped into the physical therapy room I caught sight of Nick waiting for me. How's that ankle feeling today? Much better thanks. Well I'm glad to hear it. But remember we still have a long way to go before you're back to 100%. I know I said licking my lips slightly in anticipation. There was something about the way he took charge of the situation that just seemed to have a profound effect on me. He could sense my vulnerability and knew exactly how to handle it. Thanks, Nick I said, offering him a small smile I appreciate your support. You're welcome Haley he replied, his eyes never leaving mine. The next morning when I woke I knew it was the day of our first official cheerleading practice and excitement was coursing through my veins. Despite my injury and the fact that secretly I was still using crutches when away from school because of the constant pain in my ankle, I was determined to prove to myself and to everyone else that I was not going to let this setback define me. That was the competitive athlete in me and not the future doctor talking. Cheer, crutches and love. Part 4 to come.